Hi guys, it's Jamie. I'm a certified surgical technologist. I know how hard it is to look up procedures and not know what a surgical technologist's role is in during a procedure. So I will be making videos about it. The first procedure I want to go over today is an ORIF, Open Reduction Internal Fixation of something going on in the body. The one I'll talk about today is I'm fixing up a fracture of the distal fibula. So we are doing a lower extremity. Um, the patient had a block therefore the surgeon did not need to use any local for, for the case he also um, the only local if he was going to use it was something mixed to epinephrine just to help stop the bleeding a little bit um, but other than that there was no local user in the case because there was a block use so if you know a block is going to be used during a case expect for no local to be put on your field it's okay for no local to be put on your field so because we were doing a lower extremity um, the draping procedure went um, went like the nurse did the prepping of, of the leg and the foot and then we applied a U drape to the to the base of the thigh and then we went ahead and we um, did a lower extremity when you do when you open up a lower extremity drape make sure you reach your hands through widen the hole slide it onto the foot push it all the way down as far as the base of the thighs you can open it up laterally take anesthesia there apart and then take the foot of the bed there apart and then you create a sterile field throw off everything we use suction tubing and a Fraser tip suction and then we use a bovie for cauterization he didn't use a Teflon tip Teflon tips are really easy to wipe off you don't need a scratch pad for that he did not use one therefore I made sure to have a scratch pad on my field he went ahead and he incised the lateral side. He, he incised the lateral side of the ankle with. I gave him a number number ten blade. He said it didn't matter, a number fifteen or a number ten. I decided it to be a number ten because it was very um, thick and bruised, and I believe I believed a smooth um, incision would go great with it. So. Because it was bruised and it was very swollen, I expected some blood spatter as soon as he incised it. Of course, some blood spurred out, so make sure you guys have goggles on. Um, he incised it, and then he used some bovie for cauterization. Um, make sure you put all your sharps back on your back table. Then he used a crawl and some medicine bulbs to dissect down. He used send rake retractors to retract along with a wheat lander. Once again, that surgeon's preference. Make sure you have all of the retractors that you think that they may use. Because this was a um, deep internal, um, a deep ORIF into the ankle, skin hooks weren't going to be used. So make sure you think about how deep you're going and what kind of retractors to have out. When he got down to the bone, he used a key elevator to go ahead and remove the periosteum off of the bone. And then he had to remove the debris from the fracture line. Some doctors would use corrects or picks. Um, we had a handset, so a lot of corrects correct and picks were in there. However, because of this surgeon's preference, he wanted to go ahead and keep using the elevator to dig out the debris. That's perfectly fine. Surgeon preference. Everyone does it differently. After he dug out, um, during him digging out the debris and after it, he wanted, um, we used a synthy small frag set. And inside of these were like these monster towel clips. So he took the monster towel clips, hooked one end into the distal part of the um, broken bone and then one to the proximal part of um, the other part of the broken bone. And then as he cleaned out the debris in between the fracture line, he closed the towel clip together to go ahead and move both pieces of the bone closer and closer together. When they were as close as he thought they would go or as close as he needed them to be, then he asked for a plate. He asked for a seven um, screw plate. We didn't have a seven screw. We did have a seven screw plate, but it was um, too short to fit into where the fracture line was. So we had to go for a longer one. Um, when you pass a plate to the surgeon, it's supposed to be loaded onto a cryl. If you have not seen how it's loaded already, I'm not a rep, so I don't have any stuff here at my house, so I really can't show you. So when you pass a plate, make sure you have a cryl handy because they're going to ask for a cryl to go ahead and um, load the plate up on the cryl and then manipulate it into the, into the ankle or whichever part of the body that you're going to be working on. So um, the 10 plate... The seven plate screw fit fine, however, it didn't fit on the broken bone fine, but it fit the incision fine. The ten plate screw, um, he needed to make a bigger incision for, so I had to go we had to go back, give him the knife again, then he had to go back and cauterize, and then he had to use the crawl and medicine bombs. Um, make sure you have all that stuff handy. Don't just toss to the side because you think you're done. Toss it to the side in an area where you can reach it and it's easy access because you want him to be accessible to it. You not want to cut him off of anything. So um, 
he went ahead and he did that and then he needed he went ahead and he inserted the tail plate the 10 um holes plate with the cryo and then after that it was time to drill all the holes so what happened is we use a battery pro set you guys may use something different but it's basically a handheld drill and then it comes with different chucks the chucks have um words on them like reamer drill massage drill um um wires or drill bits will fit into here and what size wire and drill bits are fit into there so we use uh, because we had a small frag set i didn't know what to use i just use common sense and just pick the smallest drill bit that the smallest drill chuck that was in there attach it to the drill then um before the case even started i attached the drill itself to the battery and i tested it out you want to make sure you give the surgeon everything and when he gets it it's perfect you might be handed really messed up stuff but by the time the surgeon gets it it needs to be perfect or you need to warn him about it if it's not so make sure you test out everything before before you give it to the surgeon he wanted a certain type of drill bit to be used i didn't know what he was talking about so he had to come over to the small frag set and show me so um and that was fine with him he showed it to me i loaded on the chuck that was loaded on the drill that was loaded on the battery and i passed him all i passed him all that along with a drill guide um he used the drill guide um drilled inside the drill guide drilled inside the bone into the plate and all that nice stuff and then he withdrew the drill i grabbed the drill then i handed him a death gauge if you guys don't know the orthopedic instruments i'm talking about and you guys are going to be with a preceptor you need to ask your preceptor what is a depth gauge ahead of time where is the depth gauge located in the set ahead of time where is the drill guide in the set located ahead of time what kind of drills do, does he like to use find out your surgeon's preference ahead of time so he drilled i got the drill and the drill guide back i handed him the depth gauge as he was measuring he shot a number i turned my um i turned my screws and i fixated my screw onto my screwdriver measured it make sure it's right and then I passed it to him and he screwed it in. This particular doctor wanted to go ahead and take an x-ray after each screw was screwed in. So that gave me a little bit of time to fix to fix up my table. Um, what I did was I had to clean the drill bit every, in between every time he wanted to go and drill. So I cleaned off my drill bit. By the time x-ray was done, he was ready for the drill again. Passed him the drill. Passed him the drill guide. He handed me back the drill. I handed him a depth gauge. He shot a number. I got the corresponding screw. I measured the screw and I gave it to him and also told him the number that I'm handing him and that and then after he screwed it in x-ray came in between that time I cleaned off my drill bit and it wasn't that long before he needed the drill again it's going to be um those are going to be repeated like that so make sure you get into the swing of things make sure every every time you use something a non-reusable item from the vendor set such as drill bits and screws you want to make sure to write down the corresponding numbers because you're going to report those to your nurse because your nurse needs to keep track of those um for billing purposes so make sure you keep track of everything you use and then after that he put in six screws into the 10 hole plate just because it's a 10 hole plate does not mean 10 screws are going to be used you can't drill over the fracture line because it will just create more pieces of the fracture spread all over the place and more complications for the patient he closed up with some vicro closed up the sub q with some monocryl and put on some skin glue aka histocryl in my hospital some fluffs and ace bandage and we called it a day he took a lot of time suturing and i noticed that ahead of time so i went ahead and i cleaned up my back table always um recognize how your doctor stitches if he stitches fast you want to make sure to be attentive to cut his sutures if he stitches a little slow take some time to yourself and clean your back table but be ready when it's time for you to cut and you guys I only have 10 minutes i'm sorry that went by a little fast but you can just go ahead and keep replaying it my name's jamie i'm a certified surgical technologist i just graduated school and luckily i was hired at the hospital where i did my clinicals at and i know how hard it is to look up procedures so hopefully this will help help you leave questions comments and concerns in the comment section below and also if you would like me to explain another surgery to you guys i hope i helped and let me know if you need me to do something else thank you guys have a great day